community. So we're going to be diving on in and Chad is going to be talking first level, what is a structured note? These things that used to be only available to the super rich, the traditional family office where you would get this thing, this investment instrument created for you specifically. And thanks to the amazing thing called the internet, you know, I've often spoken about the democratization of um, wealth that has happened through this amazing thing called the internet. The first one was actually access to stocks and shares, where equities, where we could get digital brokers, we could get these um, collective investment schemes in the forms of funds created, then access through um, online platforms and brokers, you reduce the cost and the likes of you and I could then have access to buy individual shares around the world and collectively buy these funds. Then the next evolution was in the world of bonds. Only It was crazy. Only in 2020, 2002 was the first ETF created of a, collectively enabling the average investor through their online pro platform to invest in, in bonds as a collective scheme. And then followed physical gold was the first ETF, and that was about 2006. Then, thanks to change in legislation in the US in about, the, about 2012, we started seeing other asset classes, specifically property, in fractional ownership. This collective investment could come forward in special purpose vehicles coming about. And we suddenly saw access to loan instruments, real estate, um, mezzanine level lending coming through in so many of these um, collective platforms in that scheme. And it was around, around about that time, Chad, and he'll share some of his own story, really started realizing, hang on, as an average person like us who want to create wealth and live a great life, I've been excluded from some of these really juicy assets. You discovered that for yourself and worked really hard to say, how do we then create the same democratization, the same access in this collective investing way in the realm of structured notes. So I think I've spoken enough. I've given time for people to join on before the key juicy stuff. So Chad, over to you. Awesome, thank you so much. Let me share screen quickly. Great, you should be able to see the presentation now. Yes, we can. Yeah, full screen. So folks, um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, beautiful, beautiful autumn afternoon in Johannesburg. Um, I'm delighted to spend the time with you guys. The intention today, um, because I think we're all self-directed investors, is how do we impart knowledge? How do we share? How do we give back? Um, and does this fit in your money rules? Does this fit in your portfolio? Is this something you might want to consider? And what I'd love to do is we're going to wrap up um, with a proper session of Q&A. So as questions come up, anything that you're thinking about, please put it in the chat um, in the chat so that we can go back to it. I'm going to go top down, and um, I, I hope to answer most questions as we go. But certainly if there's anything that you'd like to get into afterwards, let's do it. And Anne, thank you very much for the intro. I think you spot on um, how Cashbox was born. Both Andrew and I were keen to give back to our kids. We didn't want them to invest as retail investors. We wanted to go right to the top. And this forms in our family um, structure, fundamental uh, level, a foundation for predictable income, which I'll take you through. Um, so part of a, of a great portfolio. So folks, um, just to get the, uh, sorry, there we go. Just to get the housekeeping out the way, uh, Cashbox is a registered financial services business. We are based in Mar Has Chad frozen for others as well, or is it just me? I'd love to chat to advisors, but that's not our space. Okay. Um, I have you a froze, message. Chad, you froze on the disclaimers but I think everybody can read it. So we can Okay, great. I just, I just got a message to say my internet's unstable. How, how bad is that timing? Are you, am I okay now? <laughs> you're okay now. All right. You just laugh and I'll understand that you're not seeing me anymore. So folks, 
Um, I have a thing for watches. I have a thing for stationery. I don't know what it's about. So I'm keen to liken this to a watch. And what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at the surface. Like how do we how do we tell the time? What do we use this thing for? How how this thing operates? What makes it tick? And then we'll slowly slowly unpack and go deeper into the into the watch. Um, there are people in this community I know that would love to understand how a watch is made and what it's made from. I'm not sure we'll have enough time to get into that level of detail, but you'll certainly leave with enough. <laughs> you'll certainly leave with enough information to read a fact sheet and to make an informed decision. At the bottom over here is a, a link that I'd like to share in the chat. And folks, this is a link that's inviting you, should you be interested, to chat again at any stage to us. And it'll link you to Anne um, and we'll understand where we come from. So that will be up there all the time. Hold on to it in case this makes sense and you'd like to go further. All righty. So what is a structured note? This is a fabulous investment. It's an investment contract and it's available in dollars, pounds and euro. I'm terribly, terribly sorry for the people that live in America. We are not able to support or um, offer structured notes to American citizens. It is your internal laws, I'm so sad to say, but you can find these in America. Just you're gonna have to go and find them yourself. Um, it's a tough thing and I am sorry, but please listen in because this thing is really helpful, I'm sure. Now, these are typically used by pension funds, by family offices and high net worths, as Anne said, and have been used for decades. Why? Because they're going to bring a huge amount of predictability to my portfolio. I'm going to show you how these things are designed and what they do. They have a very high probability of delivering and typically quarterly returns, and I can get it either as income and or growth. We on average target just over 3% every quarter, giving us 12% per annum. You'll see from our records, if we had a portfolio of notes, we're typically averaging around 14%. Now, this is not to be sneezed at because this gets paid out in most flat markets and even declining markets. Let's get into this. We're going to watch two short videos. Um, I have set the sound. If you can just give me a thumbs up that you hear it, please. No sound. I do beg your pardon. Let me go back and check something. You're going to have to sing for us, Chad. <laughs> I like you so much. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Yet we know markets don't always go up. Oh, no. Do they? Oh, no. What about an okay, alternative good. investment that pays you a positive return even in flat or falling markets? Introducing Cashbox Global Structured Notes. Paying out returns of 12% per annum or more, locked in, even if the markets fall by up to 50%. Here's how. Traditional equity investments need markets to grow to generate a return, but we know the opposite can happen. Cashbox Global builds in deep levels of protection and locks in quarterly returns provided the underlying shares have not fallen by more than 50% from when your investment started. Think of it as insurance for your investment. The minimum investment is 10,000 US dollars, pound sterling or euro. All linked to blue chip shares, with returns only at risk if markets fall below the deep protection level. Bridge the gap between retail and institutional investing. Speak to us today about Cashbox Global Structured Notes. You know, so unnerving, I couldn't hear the sound at all, but I'm glad you put your hand up. <laughs> all right. So, folks, what we're typically led to believe, um, we are after uh, higher rewards. We typically got to take higher risk. We are not in that game. We are looking for the best returns we can get for the deepest level of protection we can possibly get. And this has always been in the space of those that have enough ammunition, enough money to go to if you like, the factory of um, financial products and create something that suits themselves. And this is exactly what I'm going to show you now. So a structured note offers hard currency international investments. Uh, for South Africans, it's a big deal. 
uh, and for most people around the world. And a wonderful asset that you can actually start to diversify across currencies as well. If you have a particular view, for example, on USD, GBP or Euro, these are all available. Now, these are issued directly from the world's strongest banks. Now, because I understand this audience, you're all going, oh my gosh, banks. So we're going to cover that, right? There's an elephant in the room. And there's a big difference between banks and banks. We're going to explain exactly what we're looking at here as well. Because we're going to be loaning money to the bank, folks. We've got to know they're good for it and they're going to pay us back. So this is very similar to a term deposit. It's going to have defined returns. It's going to have defined capital protection. These products have a solid track record and take you through that. And we, again, we can offer these either as growth or quarterly returns or even a combination, which makes these tremendous um, assets to start to build a portfolio of in your portfolio. So very important, no funds ever flow through cash box. I'm going to explain how that's all going to work. And we work within a highly, highly regulated environment. You're not giving your money to me. You're giving your money to, for example, SOCGEN Bank, Societe Generale, or uh, HSBC, or Barclays, et cetera, et cetera. We'll explain how this works. Now, what's incredible, we don't need a strong market growth to create a solid return. And you're going to go, how's this even possible? Let's have a look. So if we have a look, there's a place in my portfolio, there's probably a place in your portfolio for stocks, and they do different things, and they do different things at different times. It's just the nature of markets, right? So if we have a look at the S&P 500 and we go back um, of the past three years, we did see a rise through 2020, even through the market crash, right? We had a start and we had an end value. There was a growth of around 16%. We had another strong 26 as we came through that recovery. But last year, unfortunately, we did have a, a, a pullback of around 19%. So it's... It's a wonderful way to start to build a portfolio and I have different um, investments in my portfolio to give me the sum total that I'm after. But this can become a bit of a problem if particularly I'm looking to create a predictable income stream. Maybe I'm wanting to live off this. When do I buy, when do I sell? It's a bit challenge. Incomes, a structured note. So, our structured notes on average have been returning 14% for the last three years. And the average duration for one of these products is a year to year and a half. So if we have a look per year, if I take the growth of the S&P and then I take the pullback, where would we have landed up? And then if I take the cumulative of it, now you'll see a structured note is just steady 14% year in, year out. Quite a boring product. But in this space, I want boring. So if I take the boring and I keep adding them up, my yeah, cumulative... Use the phrase that I've got the URL for. Boring is beautiful. Okay, boring is beautiful. Boring is beautiful. And would I, would I rather take a 14%, I can't use the word guaranteed, but highly probable, would I ride the market? I guess the answer is I want both, but I want both in the right place in a portfolio. So I'd just like you to put this concept in your mind going, okay, so maybe if I took something predictable, you know, where would I land up? Now, in my, my world, I'd much rather be in this space, for example, than bonds at 2% or in the bank directly at zero, although I do need cash, so uh, all that good stuff to balance. But I'm hoping you get a view of what we're trying to do with a structured note. So folks, what I never knew was possible is possible. And it is possible with the sum of money to go to the largest investment banks in the world and say to them, this is what I'm looking to create. I'm looking for this type of return. I'd like a regular flow. Um, I'd like growth, et cetera, but I'm looking for protection. How do I protect my capital? And in this, we're able then to structure a win-win. So the bank wins and so do we. Now it is possible to go and design our own products delivering 10 to 14%, as you've seen, it could pay out in flat and some declining markets. I'll take you into the detail. It's underwritten by the bank. So this is issued off the bank's balance sheet. They owe us. We are credited to the bank. Now we've got to make sure we've got a proper bank, right? And then we have been doing this for decades. Just because it takes about $250,000 to half a million dollars to create a product before the bank's interested. 
has left so many people out of this. Once we got to understand that this was available and we could bolt people on top of that, off we went. And in this now are my friends, my family, my children, uh, because we're in a safe, protected space for a portion of their portfolio. Right, how is this possible? Folks, let's start with the banking structure. At the top, we have central banks. As you know, they're responsible for running uh, financial policy, particularly for a nation or a geography. Below these guys now live investment banks. And investment banks are there in order to create financial instruments. These financial instruments can then be onsold to business banking and onsold again to high street banking. The challenge is, as soon as we go deeper and deeper, we are going further and further downstream, if you like. The water's getting muddier and muddier. The fees are climbing. The stuff is all over the show. And guess what? Most of us never have heard of a structured note at a retail level. We typically bank because a structured note will compete with the other crappy products, sorry, the other products in the bank's uh, arsenal. So what we're doing is we're taking you and I from retail bank typically and all our business banking directly to where the products are manufactured. This is where pension funds go. This is where family offices go. This is where high net worths go. This is where we go. And this is where Andrew, who, are, who heads up our product, has worked for the last uh, nearly three decades. He understands he's been building these products for people all over the show. And then when I got to chat to him and I said, come on, Andrew, we can't just give this to the, the, you know, the top end. What about everybody else? That was the birth of, of Cashbox. And we're delighted. And 10 different countries now have investors coming through here. Um, it's just wonderful. And it's a community like yours that we're really, really grateful for. Let's have another look. The difference between a dedicated investor who only gets access to retail investment products compared to an investor who has access to institutional grade investments is significant. This exclusion has a marked difference in both their returns and protection, especially in our world of unpredictable markets. Did you know alternative investment solutions are available to larger investors? However, most of us just don't qualify on our own. Solutions do exist for predictable returns, income and capital protection by putting your cash to work. Outside of these solutions, most of us are caught boxed into doing nothing with our cash or being directly exposed and vulnerable to high risk, high cost opportunities. And it's for this reason that Cashbox Global exists, to open up a world of opportunity for every investor by making our institutional grade products accessible, transparent and highly effective. Because at Cashbox Global, we believe that every savvy investor deserves the ability to invest in the inner circle of protection and defined returns to invest at institutional, not retail levels. So let's unpack the concept. Utilizing technology and our strong relationships with the world's largest banks, we structure these strong, predictable contracts with returns ranging from 10 to 14% per annum. The investment bank deals securely and confidentially with each investor's platform, which manages their accounts, funds flow, and reporting, just as they would for large investors. These solutions, known as structured notes, are contractually agreed upon and come directly from the world's largest and most trusted investment banks to you. No middleman, no hidden costs. Your full investment is placed into income or growth notes. Enjoy a steady delivery averaging over 3% per quarter, available in USD, pound sterling and euro. You may ask, how is this possible? As you know, banks make money by charging you for the money they loan you for your car, home, holidays, business, etc. Banks can only lend out a defined percentage of the cash they hold. Therefore, to grow their businesses, investment banks need to keep attracting large cash deposits from larger investors for longer terms. These cash deposits typically come from the largest of investors who've been loaning money to banks since they were invented. To make this attractive, banks pay above average returns and build in levels of income and capital protection for these specialized structured loans. Through Cashbox Global technology and relationships, at last you and I can get access to the best protected income and growth generating assets from $10,000 or more. So in a nutshell, who are the parties that make up the Cashbox magic? Firstly, there is an investor. This could be you. 
And of course, you have your trusted advisor, financial planner, tax consultant or coach that looks out for you. Any investor must have an online trading platform to hold and report on your investment assets. Then there is us, Cashbox Global. We introduce you to the deal that has been structured together with the last role player, the investment bank. That wants our group of investors to contract with them. And as a collective, we channel you to predictable, protected growth and income streams. Sound complicated? Not at all. This is how it works. One, visit Cashbox Global for our available products and further learnings. Two, to access these investments, you'll require an online investor platform. Should you need a platform, there is a list of popular options on our website. Three, once you choose your investment, we'll supply you with the ISIN number and a defined closing date for your subscription. Four, now you're ready to instruct your investor platform to invest in the ISIN. Five, then you can sit back and relax. Enjoy your returns and reinvest what you can. Six, Cashbox Global will keep you updated throughout the process because your peace of mind is our business. Now that you know what's in the box, be poised for new opportunities. Partner with Cashbox Global and fly. Pretty cool. Nice. All right, so folks, just as a final summary then, and then we're going to dive into some of the meat. Banks always need to attract larger sums of money to grow their balance sheet and to improve their profitability. I'm going to show you how they do that with structured notes. I want to show you how they win. Why would they want to do it, right? As the investor, the larger investors going, hey, we're looking for above average returns. We're looking for protection. We're happy to give you a large deposit, but we want a contract. We want a contract called a structured note. And the reason, reason it's a structured note is we've structured it together with them. We've agreed to it. Defined returns, defined protection, defined payment dates, even by the day, all back to your online trading platform. Nobody in the middle between taking fees, etc. Right, folks. Now, let's start to have a look inside the watch. What makes this thing tick? I promise not to go too deep, and I promise to go as deep as somebody asks me. I see not one question, and I'm not sure if everybody's focused. See you soon, man. Eh? They're focused. I think you're going to get lots of questions, but uh -huh. we to get to the meat. All right, here we go. So here's a broad overview of how this works. The bank's going to look at three or four stocks that have strong balance sheets. They're either an indice or a direct stock. These are stocks that they believe will be steady for the coming year, year and a half. Um, and there's stuff that's appropriate, even now in the inflationary market. What's going to be steady and stable? What's going to stand out? They're going to look to these. They're going to use our cash to go and buy options on these stocks in order to create an accelerated return. I'll explain how that works. They're going to use our deposit, as I've said, and then the bank's going to issue a contract then based on this with parameters that tie into these underlying options that they're looking at. They are going to borrow our money to do this with. For that, they're going to agree to how much they're going to pay us out. And it's in the contract. Are they going to pay us quarterly or are they going to pay us a growth sum? So if you like, whatever they're paying us is their cost of capital from us. And no matter what happens, as long as those conditions are met in the contract, that bank owes us and will pay us. So I don't know if anybody's ever put money into a 32-day call account or a year's call account. Not many of us ask what the bank does with the money, but at this level, we want to know what they're doing with the money because it's in the contract, right? And we'll explain how that works. At the end, the bank's going to exercise their options on those stocks when these stocks are at a position where the bank is going to make money and they're going to put that in the contract. So the bank's going to make money. They're very happy to pay us for loaning them the money. Now, how and what's in this contract? Let's have a look. But now let's deal with the elephant in the room. Now, by show of hands, I think we've all got a heck of a fright when we saw regional banks in the States go. And then, for goodness sake, a Credit Suisse. This is an institution, right? It's been around forever. So one of the measures that we do when we work together with IDAD, these are our structuring counterparties in, in the UK, 
is we do a measure of what's called a counterparty credit monitor. And if you like, if you went to Lloyd's of London and you said, okay, I'm going to give Barclays a large deposit and I want to take out an insurance contract now that Barclays are going to hold on to my money, I'm going to get it back. How much would I pay? And this down the side here is a relative measure of the risk, if you like, premium that's put against each bank. So you'll see, and we just got this in alphabetical order. Here's Barclays at a, a measure of 113. It's it's an indication, it's not a it's not a defined number. BBVA, who we use a lot at 76, BNP Paribas at 65. Credit Swiss were way out of our range at 216. We never created a structured note and have not with IDAT created a note in five years with Credit Swiss because of this measure and because of the measure on the right hand side. We like A rated at the lowest to triple B positive, but the ins reinsurance rate has to be right. Now, if you go and have a look at a regional bank in, in the States, for example, they fell below a net, a certain level in which they were stress tested. At this level, these banks are stress tested all the time. The measures are out. Those regional banks were not. And through mismanagement and placing funds in, in uh, longer term deposits, they never had the cash. Somebody shouted fire and it fell down. So we are not in that space. We are making very, very sure that we only take our stuff to the, the highest banks we can with the very best ratings. And for that, we typically deal with about 12 of Europe's uh, strongest banks only. We will never put money down with a bank that we weren't comfortable with. I hope that helps. Excellent. All about protection. Okay, folks, now let's get into some of the jargon because we love jargon, right? A structured note loves to work in quarters. So I'm going to go across the top, quarter one, two, three, four, five, depending on how many quarters there will be in the life of a product. The bank will say to us, okay, we're going to run a product and it will go four years. How many quarters? And we're going to uh, observe on each of those. What they're going to do is they're going to have a look at what stocks are appropriate that they think they want to get into their investment bank in about a year, year and a half's time. Why? Because they're in the space of selling shares, right? They want to put these into portfolios. They'd love to grab a good share today, guess what, with our money, and on sell it in the future for a profit, right? That's their business. So what they're going to do is they're going to put three or four stocks in a basket and we'll chat about the note that's going to come out now in May, uh, as you suggested, Anne. And this will be based on commodities. Why? Because commodities are appropriate for this cycle of market. I'll go into a bit of that just now. They're going to look at one underlying. Let's say this underlying happens to be BHP Billiton. They're going to put that stock in at 100% of its start price. So let's say... Let's say the stock price is $100. They're going to measure as each quarter goes past where that stock sits. And when those stocks have risen to a certain value and the bank can make money, they're going to say, okay, we're going to early mature the product. We're going to close it out earlier. It's called an auto call. We're automatically going to call it back. And I'm going to explain why we love these things. And in this case, what our graph is showing, do you see this dotted line? says that this auto call is available from quarter four onwards. So as long as the shares are at or above their start price, the product's going to close out. Now, let's say they were happy to pay us 4% every quarter. And let's say the stocks just stayed flat in a flat market, didn't generate any income, didn't generate any growth. The bank's happy to close it out because they want these shares at a point in time. They're happy to pay us the 4%. A wonderful product, right? To be in a flat um, and stable market. And why we love structured notes, we don't need the shares to shoot the lights out. We don't need, we're not looking for alpha. We're not looking for any of that stuff. We're looking for stability and it creates a return. Phenomenal. Now, built into this note is going to have another thing called an income trigger. What's going to trigger the payment of income from the bank to my platform? And they'll set a level. In this case, they've set it at 50%. Now, how's this, folks? So long as the underlying share in this basket has not more than halved its start price, we're in the money. We get paid out. Where in the world do you invest in shares or stocks that by dropping halfway, and yes, this level can vary, and I'll show you how you find it in a note. 
all the way to half, and it's going to pay out my coupon. Now, let's say we move along and we get to an order call level. All my shares are at or above its start price. This is what the dot said. Bang, it's going to pay the last coupon and it's going to pay my last, uh, sorry, all my capital back to my platform on a specific day. They like to use the word coupon because they're going to mix a blend of bonds and stocks. And it's got really nothing to do with us. We don't have to manage. We don't have to do any of that stuff. That's what the bank's doing in the background. And that's the reason they don't call it an income. They call it a coupon. Now, right on the right-hand side, you'll see the thing called capital protection. If, in the unlikely event, this product runs to full term, even if the lowest performing share, the lowest in this basket, we're always looking at the lowest, is at or above 50%, I'm going to get my full capital out. I'm going to get my full capital out, even if the lowest share has dropped by up to 50%. So then your next question, okay, what happens if it drops by more than 50%, right? Let's say there's a, let's say there's a share in here, it's just bombed right out, the bank's got this wrong, and it comes out, let's say, at 45% of its start price. I'm going to get 45% of my capital out as if I owned the share. Now, it has not happened to us in five years that we've gone, that we have not auto-called. It's auto-called before full maturity. If that's happened, we've never tested this barrier. We need to know what the terms and conditions say just in case. Now, through the course of this product is the last feature that we have a look at called the memory feature. Now, folks, it's going to blow you away. Let's say one of these shares drops in quarter two below 50%. The bank says, okay, I'm not going to pay that coupon, but I'm not going to lose it either. I'm going to wait until the shares are back, pay you that coupon, and anything that's missed, I'm going to bring back and pay you as well. Now, we've spoken about a lot of stuff. I hope you're not too confused. I'm going to go through this one more time as an example. We're going to follow the flow, right? Let's say there comes our share. Uh, and again, let's use BHP. We start end of May when this new product is going to go live. Product rockets. And look, when quarter one comes around, we're well above the income trigger of 50%. Bang, it pays my coupon to my platform. Then all of a sudden, something happens in the market and we take a turn. And let's say we're now at 15% reduced from its start price. No worries, we're still well above our 50%. My coupon's going to flow. Let's say for one or more quarters, we go below. Do you see it? We've activated the memory feature. We're on hold, not lost, hold. When we come back, bang, let's say in quarter four, quarter four pays out. It looks back. Any missed coupons come back. This is why pension funds love this stuff because at last I can get some predictability of flow, right? I can get predictability into a portfolio. Now, if I have a portfolio of these, three, four, five, whatever I'm blessed to have, well, it just starts to work out, right? I've got different banks, I might have different underlyings, I might have different payment dates, just a wonderful income stream we can create. And then at some point in time, quarter X, we're above the start price, my full capital comes out, straight back to my platform, nobody in between, we let you know what's happening, we're not touching your money. It's going straight to your platform, clean, tidy, very neat. Now, let's have a chat about how the bank makes some money, shall we? Let's have a look. In February of 2020, we had no idea COVID was around the corner. We created this product because technology stocks were the flavor at the time, and it looked like it was on the way uh, to having a successful year. And it turned out to be a successful year. But let's have a look at what happened in the meantime, right? We went live on the 7th of February, 2020. Do you see we've put the actual price of the shares down because we remember we're gonna measure it every quarter. This was designated to pay out three and a half percent every quarter. We're gonna follow Twitter because Twitter was the one that took the biggest hiding through the COVID crash and still recovered, right? But now what did it do? Because we have this income protection built in at 50%, even if Twitter halved to $18, we would still pay out. The, the deep level of the March low, Twitter was at 22 bucks. It was 40% down of its start price. The first observation, because we measured on a specific day, was the 29th of May. 
Do you see Twitter was at 30 bucks, 60 cents? It was down 17%. And if we have a look at Apple at minus two and AMD at minus five, where in the world do negative stocks pay you an outcome? But because we were above 50%, look at that. It paid our flow. And it continued to pay our flow. And then the, the order call was set one year later. So the from the 7th of February 21 to the 8th of February 22, look at this. Twitter's grown by 50 uh, to 51 dollars. It's grown by 38 percent. It has a 77 growth, an 80 growth, a 56 growth. The bank says, "Thank you very much. We bought the options with your money at this price. We are now going to go and put these shares into our investment bank and go and on-sell them at today's price." Do you see where the banks made money? And they were happy to pay us what was that 13.2 percent for the year. Now. Do you notice, folks, we are not participating on the upside? We have all this downside protection. So are these things appropriate in some markets? Yes. Are they appropriate to create a predictability of income? Yes. Are they a full portfolio? Sorry, do they form a full, uh, a complete portfolio? No, but they have their space. And thank you Isn't so this powerful? And thank you so much for bringing this in because I think it's really important that we understand where it fits in and always say portfolios create freedom never one investment never one yep. asset and this is about that predictability and it's so important we also understand what is our own enough mark because i think one of the things that can happen in the world of investing is greed fits in and people say well i want the 56 percent, i want the 80 percent, but do you yep. want the downside and the other side and where we can go hang on what's my enough number for these different parts of my portfolio. And we're saying, oh, okay, I want a certain income. 13% lets me achieve my freedom and my side, it's enough. Except there's going to be other stuff there. You could go and try and do what the banks do, absolutely, but then you must understand what are the other risks you're getting. So I think it's so important because often we can get into, well, why are they making money of our money? Because it's a win-win. Yeah. And at last, and we're working with a financial institution as opposed to getting done by financial institutions. All right, so just to give you an idea, um, these are all the early maturities we've had through the range of products. Our average period to order call has been a year and a half. But what we always tell the community, and if the product says it's a four year, please put your money away expecting it to be there for four years. But if it early matures, great, we let you know. And what's lovely at this stage, folks, we go and have a look and say what's appropriate. I mean, the world is changing so fast right now. I'd like to rather have a view of the coming year, year and a half, for that order call and come out of the product and then go into something that's appropriate again. So let's have a quick look. Do you remember we spoke and said, so it's from the chat group up the way, we spoke and we said, in an income structured note, I could even be at the end of the product at minus 20, 10, whatever, of any one of those underlyings. We're still in the money. I would have collected the coupons all the way. I've got a full term. I would have got my capital out. Now, this hasn't happened that we've gotten to full term, but that's what the conditions say. Because what we need to know is what happens if it doesn't go right, right? What happens in this case if this last share just falls off the earth and here we get a 40 percent 45 the conditions say and you're signing up to it you're going to get your capital out as if you own that share directly hasn't happened but we need to know what we're signing ourselves up for that's why when we do our due diligence on the product who is the bank <laughs> and who's the bank and who are the underlying shares and what do we believe about them now, we have a slightly different animal here called a growth-based note. Now, the banks typically pay us a larger coupon because in this one, they're not paying us a quarterly income. What they're doing is they're accumulating a quarterly income. So as we go past each quarter, the coupons are building. So for example, let's say in the growth-based note that I'm going to show you now, and BHP is there, They'll give us an allocation. They'll also tell us, in this case, this order call uh, trigger is set at six months, which is exactly the case in the, in the May product. They say, as soon as all four shares are above the order call level from quarter two, it will close out. But what we will do 
it's a massive 15 percent per annum it accumulates in quarters and depending on how many quarters go by once it's above the order call level full capital plus that sum growth comes out now the reason that they can pay us a higher growth is because at this point they're going to exercise their options they haven't had the cost of shelling out cash through the life of the product so typically a growth-based structured note will pay out a larger sum the big difference we needed to order call in order to pay out these coupons where an income will pay out as long as we're within the um, in the range and we're in the money so just to graphically have a look at this an income-based note will pay out the coupons quarterly and when we order call our capital comes out a growth-based is going to add let's say it's four percent plus four percent plus four percent until it finally pays out so slightly different animals and we've also done a mix of these so we've had a hybrid which pays portion income portion growth let's have a look at society general this is a fact sheet from november 2020 now folks when you're able to read this fact sheet let me tell you you're probably in the top one percent of investors and you're going to be there just now so Best here's society <laughs> So here's Society Générale. If we go and have a look at their ratings, they're going to be right on the top. We love them. No problems with this bank. Um, they're going to tell us their ratings. They're going to tell us that the maximum term for the product is four years. We understand maximum, right? Do you see here's the order call? And the order call says it can order call, the first observation being at 12 months. So this product is going to run a minimum of 12 months. From there, it can order call. Do you see they've specified the auto call trigger level at 90%? So they're saying, even if one shares 10% down, we're going to close it and we're going to go because the balance are probably going to be where they want them. And look here, I can get a fixed income. This one was paying a fixed income. No matter where the income trigger was, this paid a fixed income of 3% in pounds or 3.35 in USD. The difference between pounds and USD has always been slight like this, and it's a difference between uh, lending rates in either country. It has a slight impact uh, on the rate. Euro still below pounds, typically. Um, we do euro on request, um, and there's a, there's a case to, to, to look at euro in the current market, of course. Now, do you see they say capital risk is not, this is not capital protected. Why? While the bank underwrites to pay us at any stage when the product order calls, they have to pay us. Our capital is not protected because of the very, very last observation. Only at that very last observation, observation, we need to be above the 50%. You see, that's what's putting our capital at risk. While the, while the product is underwritten by the bank, and we're very comfortable through the life of the product, because we know where they are, we have signed up for that very last date. That's why, again, we want an order call. Capital protection barrier, 50%. And the European style says, because there's a difference between American and structured notes and European, European says only on the last observation is my capital uh, going to be impacted potentially. An American could be at any stage. Don't like it. Don't like it. Now, here's the sheet that we really enjoy. The back of the fact sheet tells us, look at this, folks, the payment date on a specific date that the bank's going to pay your platform. You will see your funds typically two working days after this, and you can then guarantee exactly where you are. So what we'll typically do to our community, with our community, is we'll say, great, guys, we're up for an observation this coming week. It's looking really strong. Everybody's in, um, and we'll let you know when that order call happens. So what a wonderful product um, come and listen when we do our rationales. Why are we looking at these stocks? Why are we looking at these banks? And then you can set and forget. And in every quarter, we let you know what's happening. Um, you can pop in at any time. It's your account. You can see you, you're involved. We, we don't have sight of, of, of what's, what's happening there. Here's the order call trigger level set down the side because the one you're going to see for May actually descends. We're making it easier to auto call. On the right-hand side, you're going to see a subscription period. This was available from the 8th of November to the 27th of November. So these are not open-ended. They're not funds. They're not ETFs. They're open and close. But a specific date to open, a specific date to close, we ask the bank for a certain sum of money. 
um, they say, okay, they're good for the product they'll create it as long as we can bring, let's say, 500. We let our community know and off we go. Here's the magic number. Do you see this ISIN number? This is the International Securities Index number or identification number, sorry. Here's the pound-based one and here's the US dollar-based one. Now, if you see an ISIN, this is regulated. You can track and trace this on Bloomberg. This is a real product. This isn't something that somebody's made up, right? So what we do is we'll let people know. Let's say you say, okay, I'm keen. I want to come in for 10, 20, 100, whatever it might be. We then give you the ISIN. We help you with your dealing tickets so that you can tell your platform uh, where to go and what to do with it. Folks, you've just read a fact sheet. And these fact sheets, sadly, are not offered to Joe Public and to the general. You've got to get invited into these things. That's what drove us mad. We said, okay, let's let good people get in, right? And here we go. Right. Let's have a chat around the regulated environment in which we operate. Cashbox works together with IDAD, who are our principal structuring partner. IDAD have the modeling software issued to them by the European banks. So what we do is we say, for this particular market, uh, what are the banks looking for? What are we looking for? There's got to be a coming together of mind saying, okay, this is what we, what we have in mind. We then shop that, or shop that, take, how's this? You take your money now to the top providers and you say, okay, we're happy to put 500 with you. This is what we're looking at more or less. You give us a proposal. They give us the proposal. We like what we see. We adjust stuff together with them. The bank then issues the contract and off we go. So this is our relationship. We love working with advisors. We love working with uh, financial coaches. Because at this point, if there's comfort and understanding, things unlock and things free up, um, it's really good for us. Sitting in, our, in the center of our universe is our investor. Our investor would have to then go and open up a trading platform. I'm going to take you into that in a minute. A trading platform is a highly, highly regulated space. An investment bank will never deal with just you and I off the street. They need to know that we've been vetted. So there's all that KYC, there's all that good stuff that needs to be done from the platform before the platform will accept your money and before the bank will then deal with the trading platform. But very important folks, look at the arrows. This is your funds. You have put funds into your platform. You've instructed your platform to put funds, let's say with this in particular investment bank. And guess what? The returns come directly back. There's nobody in the middle here taking fees or funds. So then your next question has to be, how does Cashbox make money, right? So what we do here is the bank say to us, great, we will give you an aggregating fee. We'll put in part of the whole contract, um, a contract fee that comes back to Cashbox for putting the deal together for the bank. This is how we make our money. So if, for example, you put your 10, 100, 20, whatever it might be, into this product. That's exactly what goes into the product. No fees are deducted at this stage. And if the contract says it's gonna pay you three or 4% a quarter, that's exactly what comes back to your platform. So the only fees you now need to watch out for are platform fees, right? They need to make a living. We'll explain how we look at that as well. But what you have here is a fee light, well-controlled, well-regulated investment process that you have 24 seven access to. And on this investment platform, you could start to maybe put in your other uh, index opportunities or other shares um, and cash. And they will take cash from, from several different countries, uh, currency, sorry. So I can have uh, a trading account. The reporting then would come back. I'd set, for example, um, the end of February, if I was South African, I was looking for tax reporting. Platforms take care of all of that, clean, neat and tidy. So on our website is a list of the most popular platforms that our community use. So if you don't see your trading platform here, it might be that you have a platform that can only sell what they have on the shopping list. Because what we do is a little different. We send these guys a dealing instruction to place a deal on a particular product. They have to have the ability to do it. So in this case, we're actually going to send it into somebody to get the thing contracted. 
Now, if you have any questions, I'll put in the top of the chat group a link. Give us a shout. We'll help you through it. Of all these platforms, and it's a great thing that you do your own due diligence, by far the easiest that we've had people deal with has been this unfortunate name called Ramsey Crookle. They haven't been. They've been very good. It is an unfortunate name. <laughs> <laughs> They're 75 years old uh, on the um, UK Stock Exchange. Um, just tremendous. And you can chat to people. And zero, you can open up an account with zero on your account. Some of these other guys are looking for large sums of money. Um, but we, we don't mind what platform. We just want to make sure you're safe. Pat, they so, ask questions like the platforms like Interactive Investor, Hardwoods and Lansdowne, yes. inter, in, uh, yes. Interactive Brokers, Desiro. Yes. Um, you know, obviously, this is not a complete list. How, how yes. best to sort of understand those? Okay. So if it is that I can buy um, perhaps unit trusts, I can buy indexes, et cetera, they would have a defined list that I can buy from. If there was a space where they said to you, cool, let us know if there's anything else you want to buy, there's a good chance we could use them. Uh, interactive is not one of those, for example. But Exante... Interactive I think investors some... or interactive brokers? Interactive brokers, I beg your pardon. Saxo? Yes, Saxo, definitely. Okay. Um, Desiro? Uh, I'll check Desiro for you. I... Okay, because we've yeah. got a lot of people in, in Europe and Ireland... On, on what, I, what I think, I think what would be wonderful, Anne, is if everybody did put in who they currently use, let me do an exercise. And what might be really helpful is we've had a look at these and they, they just said not. I think that would be help as, as yeah. much as it is to list who does it, you know, maybe who doesn't do it. And when, yeah, if we also know who doesn't, that would be really great. And we just, just yeah. so we don't lose while we're on the brokerage site, we have a question yeah. from Andy um, and... I'm not sure where it got to previously on previous sessions. Are people in the UK now able to put um, these into their SIPs or their ISA? So um, the SIP was a challenge. The SAS is definitely doable. Um, and then I've got a, got a an advisor in the UK helping us now because it was the third one. Um, help me out now. An ISA, sorry. The ISA was a challenge. The SIP was available, but now we've got an intermediary platform, which created a challenge. And then the SAS was definitely doable because folks, what you have here is an international investment. So it's not an investment in the UK, uh, which makes a challenge in terms of the ISA because it's, it's typically UK based um, investment. So SAS definitely as an offshore or SIP. Um, we've got strong people like Ray and Diane, the likes on the call, you know, maybe they could share as, as, as uh, UK citizens, you know, what they're doing if they, if they wanted to. Yeah. And so the key thing, like Mandy's saying, can you use other platforms? Absolutely. You know, so you could have your hardware and lands down, interactive brokers yes. for your, your main growth portfolio. And you could just have one of these platforms like a Ramsey Crook or because it doesn't have a, a big minimum amount just for yes. your structured note for your for your income investments if need be right right and again it's an offshore allowance it's an offshore structure so for south africans for example you would use your offshore allowance um, and then go offshore into this as a uk citizen would it's not based in the uk um, because we use all the banks around europe but as i said you know we gladly take you through it so to access it, again, we need the platform we've just spoken about. Sometimes they're called custodial because they're going to hold custody of your contract on your behalf. The ISA number we spoke about, without that, there is no product. Uh, what we're looking for is this open architecture allowing people to buy into different investments, not just you know what's on the shelf. Um, and of course, watch your fees. We can show you what that looks like and watch your minimum investment um, we don't mind again which which site we use. Perhaps, and and I don't think this is complete. And but you know, if if I took return up on a vertical and I took my perceived risk across the bottom, um, wonderful for cash, hard currency. I mean, it's zero. 
uh, maybe bonds a bit more. My my risk is picking up a bit. Uh, my property my property portfolio I do around eight percent, for example, and then structured notes has the space. But what I'm looking for, particularly here, is this predictability. I come to the right hand side. I definitely have high income funds and I definitely have my own stock investments, um, but I'm now living in that unpredictable space in order to create this balanced portfolio you keep uh, keep teaching us about. So maybe visually it helps you know place where this is. No, that's really great. And I think for those people on the um, session, we're still in the accumulation phase, starting off majority of the investments are going to just be in those regular consistent investing in a broad market equity funds they're building up and they their income is coming from their actively earned income so a lot of this yeah. is also something where we're starting to getting off the if the feed off stage yeah. wanting more income um bring in to provide that so we're not having to sell off capital when as I say the market might be down so it's also about where in that journey yes and and it, it still drives me crazy, and because you know we we have ten thousand dollars pounds a euro as our minimum. Now it's a long way off five hundred thousand, but it's not a debit order, is it? So again, you know, when when are we ready? Um, and we really hope to get this done, you know, over a period of time. There you go. Um, so guys, in summary, guys and girls, the bank's got to be confident in what that the stocks that they're going to put uh, and, and buy options against and use our borrowed money is going to generate enough profit before they do this. Now, before they ever issue a structured note, it goes through an investment committee, right? So who's going into this product? It's A, us going, hey, look, this is what we're looking for. And then B, the banks themselves going, all right, we really, we really like this. We're happy to do that. We, to, to get your... Want me to get your business? We're happy to offer these uh, protection levels. So a lot of people have had a look at this, and highly skilled people determining these underlyings that go into this, so that the bank can make money. They're not in the business of losing money, right? As the investor, in summary, and this is just reading the watch, what's the strength of that bank? What's the strength of that underlying basket? Would I want to even own those things directly? Could be a great asset test, eh? You know, would I? Would I? Would I want to buy those shares? because they form the underlying of our contract. Then of course, no funds flow through your cash box, you full, you're in full control um, and off we go. So I offer and our gift, if you do use this link, we'd love to set up a one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to go deeper, if we're gonna get into Q and A now, but at any stage, if, if you're interested, you'd like to know more, maybe you do wanna take a next step, or maybe you just wanna stay informed, please let us know. Oh, good. I'm happy to fly up and down through the slides and answer any questions if you want. That mute button. Let me unmute you out. myself. Let me unmute myself. <laughs> Great. So, Chad, maybe for you can just stop sharing the, the presentation for the moment and we can sure. jump in. Um, in the structured note, you had an income note issued in, um, it, yeah, it actually closed yesterday. The strike date was yesterday. yesterday was a Societe Generale income note. Now yes. in there, you have a feature. Excellent. Uh, uh, I think where have I got my fun fact sheet? Let's see if it's sharing the correct one. You have Sorry. this um, feature, the knockout trigger. Brilliant. Could you All right, so explain the knockout um, trigger a little bit more? Yes, with pleasure. So what we've done in, in view of the markets, and we want to be risk off right now, completely risk off, and you're going to see it in the next product as well. The bank said, what we'll do, we're going to measure two stocks. In this case, um, a little risque maybe because there's Neo, a, a Chinese car manufacturer, and then Tesla, who's also uh, all over the show, but South Africans, we just got to love the guy, I suppose. Um, if either of those shares get over the, the auto call level, it gets knocked out. They're going to sell that option. The remaining one stays until it auto calls. The product would run as if uh, both were still uh, running concurrently, but 
to auto call, one would drop out and then the second one would drop out. Why? We want to make it as easy as possible to auto call always. This is going to knock one out as it gets to its level and the second one when it's ready and then the product will close. Okay, I think I understand that, but my foggy look looks like I'm not quite there. So the also the knockout um, trigger yep. is it, it's like a an early auto call on just each individual stock. Yes, I don't need all three or all four or all two to be above the auto call trigger level. As it happens, they'll take it out. Okay. So um and does that also happen if the if the auto call um what is the ter period of that? So I can this one I'm trying to say is that typically like you might have the auto call only triggers after year one. Okay, great. Could I ask you to put the fact sheet back up? You may. Thanks, man. <laughs> I've never had Anne as my secretary, guys. Never. Won't happen again, but hey, let's <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> uh, it's lovely so to check, Chad, can I can I comment? Hi, it's it's, it's Nick here. So, so my understanding is like this thing, you know, the strike prices yesterday were yes. uh, what, what about seven fifty or something for Neo and one hundred and fifty four or something for Tesla. Uh -huh. If they have a little, if they have a little rally next week. Yes, and they both they both close or you know sorry it's it's, it's at the first observation three months time they happen to be at one sixty and eight fifty yes. then they both out but on this particular um, note it, it has to run for a year yes so the, it'll it'll be paid for a year but then on uh, I guess the fourth observation um, yes. the thing would auto call and close is, is, do I have that correct. 100%. So, and to go back to your uh, chat, the auto call opportunity is quarterly, but it's only available being at 12 months. So from 12 months onwards for the remainder of the product, the auto call is available. Um, and as was rightly said now, it doesn't matter what happens in the first three quarters. When I get to quarter four from 12 months onwards, each one could auto call and they could auto call at a separate stage will knock them out of the need to auto call again. So once it's auto called from 12 months onwards, it's out running and off we go. So wonderful question and comment. So one could knock out if, so if, yes. if at month 12, um, yes. any of them or one of them is at 95% of the initial level. Right. They or higher. Auto or higher. So 95 yeah. or higher, they can auto call. So that knockout. The, but the note might stay open because only yes. one might knock out. Yes, we need both to complete the, the auto call and off we go. Okay. Now, there's a third one. Do you see it? There's yep. something else in there. Yeah. The 50% okay. input. All right. Now, what happens here? The bank has said to give us further protection in options. You can buy what's called calls and puts. And we typically put we put a put in fears when we want to protect anything on the downside. So now what this means, do you remember I said anything below 50% in a normal note, I would get, let's say, 45% of my capital out. That geared put halves that impact. So if, for example, Tesla closed at 45%, I'm not going to get 45% out. I'm going to get 90% out. Okay. Now, we've gone straight into the higher grade stuff. Eh? Um, we're not, we're not afraid, Gareth. Well, we're please. not scared. Eh? We're not scared. It's important so to understand. That... Far more important to understand than worry about looking stupid. <laughs> our wealth That's is quite... far more important than our egos. That's why we love you, Anne. Great. And up. Can I can I share again? Would you mind? Absolutely. And um, let's start diving in. Well, can I just um, answer answer some of these questions, and then we yes, can come back in. So, um, Katie has said, um, "Do you know some platforms that she could be looking at in the US?" Katie is a US citizen. Um, the, anywhere yeah. so, you can direct, although you can't recommend. Yeah. So, Katie. Uh, here's the trick, right? The 
the states say you can buy structured products as long as you buy it in the states. So the land of the free, mm, I'm not sure. So they are available in the states. Uh, you're going to have to find a structured note provider, um, and then platforms won't be difficult at all. Okay. So you don't know a specific provider that you could Google or look at. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we just haven't investigated because we stay a long way away from you know, any, we, we can't trip up for the states. Yeah, we, we all try and stay a long way from the IRS. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry, Kate. Mandy said, are there um, set point times for investing in a structured note or do you make the investments and then it gets entered into a contract as and when? Okay, and excellent. Process. <laughs> we try and create a structured note at least once a month, and um, so we'll 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 a we get people that say, okay, cool, we've got cash coming out. We keen to go. We'll start to shape something. We have had two or three months where we haven't created anything, like the crash of twenty twenty. We didn't know what the heck was going on and where it was going to go, so we had set out. Um, so we try, and you'll see on our on our website, we try and launch at least monthly. Yes. So if you don't make this month, don't panic. There's another one coming and another one and another one. And what's nice is they will then flow and adjust depending on, on you know, what that market outlook looks like. And you'll see that the underlyings would also vary. Um, it's a wonderful space to be in. Um, I, create your own product. How cool is that? What? Go create your own product. How cool is that? <laughs> no, absolutely. So many really, you'll, you'll say, okay, this is the amount you want to go in. You would look to see what is available. So that's for sign up for the, for the, to get notifications. Cash out would let you know what is the latest one. And you'll see a strike price. So basically you have to invest within that period. They'll get you that yeah. ISA to go on your plan. And then that, that opportunity is closed and the next one. So it's not a sort of, well, here's our money. And then it just drips in. You choose the individual ones and how much, and it goes onto your platform. Great. Perfect. Um, Di, hello, Di. It's so good to see you. Di's been in our world for a while on her beautiful farm. Uh, Di says, hi, Chad. Please advise, if say you've got a million rand, how many structured notes would you diversify that across? What is what is so, your objective, Di? Uh, Can you unmute, Di? You need to unmute yourself. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ah. All right. I have it. Hello, Di. I have, have it. I have um, a trust and I've, through Jill, have opened up a, a RAND Swiss account so I can do nice. um, what you call it. Uh, when you go out of from RAND into oh, dollars, offshore, sure. oh, sure. yes. well, um, got the blank now what it is but i've got say a million rand in this trust how would i sort of break it up what would you suggest is your product so, what is your predominant what are you are you wanting stable income with capital protection or are you wanting growth? yes yes well so, growth actually. this is so important and thank you for coming on because we all have to get really clear on what the bleep do we want and then we make sure the product so income cool over to you chad all right, cool. Uh, thanks. Nice to see you. Um, so sadly, that's $54,000, right? Um, that could be five products. So it could be five months of staggered um, input, provided you liked what the product was going to do. So the one you're going to see for March is a growth-based note. Um, so you probably put your money away. You may see the capital in that growth, let's say, in... 12 to 15, uh, 18 months time. Does that suit your objective? So what I like to do is I like to build um, growth and income, and I like to also do cross currencies. Um, that way I create a portfolio of notes within my portfolio. Um, so given your, your sum, you might then decide, okay, how, how would I like to split it out? So for example, um, the note that launched uh, just yesterday, I didn't go into. It didn't didn't tick everything I was looking for. Um, so it might be that in two months' time, there's a product and you go, yuck, I don't like it. That's fine. Um, you know, wait for the next. So I don't need rush and put everything in one. Um, 
build a portfolio. You've got a wonderful base to do that with if that's what you want to do with that sum. Yeah, I really love that. You know, get clear if it's income, then focus on those income notes, split that between, and absolutely, I think, you know, five gives you that opportunity to spread that. And I think it's and such then, a great point. Don't rush. You know, um, Nick often uses the phrase, you know, never, you know, when, if a ship has sailed from, from your um, dock, never dive in and swim after it. The next opportunity, <laughs> will come, you know, wait for the next ship to come. If it doesn't, if it doesn't fit your criteria. So there's also that trust that the next thing will come along and, and spread that risk. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if Ray wants to share, maybe. Thanks, Ty. So good seeing you. Ah, great to see you. Ray, how are you doing on your structured notes? That mute catches there everybody. That's better. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, I, I really love the structured notes. I mean, I was looking, I had the income statement yesterday from CIG, and I've probably got about 20% of my portfolio invested in structured notes, but last year it did over half the income. Now, assuming I've only been doing structured notes for about 18 months, now some of those won't have been active for long enough. Yeah. But I'm still getting more than half of the income from the structured notes. Uh, again, you know, the classic rules of diversification, diversification, diversification works really well. So I've got some income notes some growth notes and some income and growth notes. But yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it's just swings and roundabouts. Yeah, and you know, some of our wealth builders, Caroline's been talking about, she's you know, trying to take some of her portfolio and turning them into income to get that reliability so you can structure that. But really, key, yeah. you need to know what you're looking for. Well, it's fantastic. And, and, it's and so again, good you know, to you, Ray. UK, yeah, it's great. Um, for the UK as well, we've had big changes in uh, tax as well the last 12 months. So you've now got lower limits on interest you can earn, lower limits on capital gains. So that makes a change to how you want to earn the income. Yeah, it, it certainly does. Yeah, Where certain of those things like say capital gains tax was juicy and now they're bringing it you know, down significantly. So balancing yeah. that out. So cool. Hey, Love Ray, it. could you see have these conversations? Yeah. And yeah. would you mind, um, Ray, do you, could sure. you shed some light on the ISA SIP and SAS if you if you have uh, in your experience? Um, I don't think you can put it in an ISA. Yeah. Um, because it, and again, I have a wide range of funds in an ISA, but our global funds and UK funds. You can invest all sorts of stuff, but there's certain kinds of funds you couldn't invest in. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the criteria are, but I don't think you can have structured notes in an ISA. You have yeah. rates in there, you have um, index trackers, all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah. But as far as I'm aware, you can't have structured note in an ISA. No, no. Okay, cool. Ray, you rock. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, so Ray is using CIG and they're also based on the Isle of Man. Lucy says, at what point is capital gains tax paid? So Lucy, like any investment, each of us have to manage our own tax. It depends on what country you're in. Um, and obviously there's the income component. But um, Chad, capital gains, I'm assuming on, on it will fall in the tax year of when the auto call happens. Correct. And then income notes are taxed as income. Growth notes are taxed as uh, capital gains. What is a bit weird, but don't tell anybody, is if a product auto calls in a year, 18 months, it's still capital gains. So you know, perhaps again with your accountant, your uh, advisor, something you want to discuss. But the great news is your platform will then differentiate for you. Uh, and help you with your reporting. Great. Um, Archie says, can you have more than one currency in the Ramsey Cookall account? So can you have yes. a euro? Yep. You can have so no what's, currencies. They, they, they take currency from just about every country in the world. 
Um, so let's say you wanted, um, it could be uh, Australian dollar, for example. No problem. You can have an Australian dollar account and you can also have a US and a, and a GBP, et cetera. Um, you can have mix and they'll then consolidate all the reporting to your home currency as well and off it goes. So it's very convenient. Fantastic. Dana says in RANDs, what is the minimum amount? Janice, you can't invest in RANDs. These are USD, GBP, or Euro products. <laughs> so it is the 10,000 in, in any of those. Fantastic. Well, anyone else who's got questions, you can put your hand up and let me know, or you can shout up, unmute yourself. But Chad, back to you. You wanted to share something else. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, let's have a quick look at how a product comes to life. Um, okay. Sorry, guys. There's an operator error here. There we go. Right. <clears throat> so Society General is back in town for May's product. Um, this is going to be a growth-based note. This is how we start going to market. We shape a product and then we go to um, some of the larger communities and say, okay, how much are we interested in and what's this going to look like? So in this case, the auto call is semi-annually, semi so it's only every six months. The first observation in six months, this goes back to your previous question, the auto call trigger is set at 100% for the first six months. But look at this, we've got an auto call step down. Why do we want to do this? We want to make sure that it's easier and easier and easier to auto call. So by final observation, it could be down at 65%. And what we're looking at here is a coupon rate that would accumulate every six months of 7.85% or 15.7% per annum. So do you see a growth-based note is producing a bigger coupon than an income-based? But look at this. There's a lovely stocks in here. It has Rio, Glencore, BHP, and Freeport. Why could this make sense? I think with an inflationary um, environment, for the states, all of these commodities can get more and more expensive. It's going to have an impact on the share price. Um, it's appropriate for now and maybe well worth looking at. So it's possible that these could even auto call within six months, right? Or so, we follow so this, just to you know, say everybody's clear on, on the capital, the, the coupon rolls over and you yes. get to pay out only on, on the auto call. Yeah. So here we have to have an auto call. Oh, and this is why. Yeah. Right. And we make it as easy to auto call as possible. And then, of course, our capital, same story, that 50% barrier. So your question is who's Society General? Do I like them? And then what do I think about these underlying shares? And an asset test always is would you want to hold those in a portfolio ordinarily? And then, really important as a reminder to everyone, this is a fixed income product even though it's a capital. So what I mean by that is you you cannot in three months time say, hey, I want that money to now go and pay the kids school fees. You must, mm -hmm. when you're looking at any of these, expect or anticipate for your money to be put away for the full duration of the note. Yeah. Early order call so, bonus, but factor that in. And so really important. And again, on this one, deciding, are you wanting income, growth, or a combination? Love it. Great. And then we'll know the product has gone live once this ISIN is available. So right now it's to be confirmed because it's an idea only. Great. So they are busy be putting that together for cash box. And then you yep. are to find, let everybody know, coming to your point, uh, Mandy, where uh, that woo -woo, this is now live. How long is the period you have to invest in it? You would get the ISIN. Typically you guys all hold a... Um, information session and then you yep. see if it's a fit and if it's in that category part of your portfolio perfect wonderful well chad what a fantastic session so just i'm going to look yeah. at everybody here put your hand up if there's any last questions queries shout outs um ray says looking forward to hearing more about the new <laughs> are there any other Thanks, questions ray. nick anybody else ah Rachel, is that a question? 
Okay, unmute yourself. Hello, Rachel. Hiya. Hiya. Um, you might have answered this, and I'm sorry if I missed it, but no, when you said you could Let's go in 10,000 UK or 10,000 Aussie dollars or 10,000 US dollars, and even based in the UK, you could go for those other ones. Yes. Does yes. that mean, so presumably, that means that you wouldn't need 10,000 pounds. You could have a smaller amount because you're going in a different currency and the, it translates into less pounds. Absolutely. If you've said that already, no, sorry. As long as the pound holds up. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what yeah, else? Yeah. So it, yeah. it's just no, the that's three good. currencies. It's just the three currencies, Euro, USD, and GBP. So not oh, okay. So those three. Oh, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. Rachel, you'll, you'll see the ISA number will have the currency linked to it, and then it's 10,000 of that currency. So you're quite right. Um, but it's 10,000 of the denomination you're going into. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Fab Thanks. Question. Good question. Great to see you, Rachel. Okay, who else? Shout on out. Any more questions? I think yeah. Nicholas... Nicholas, you have a direct question. I'm happy to answer it. Um, I, thanks, Chad. I'm not. I'm not sure my um, questions will interest the rest of the of the group, or um, okay. no or, and might just confuse them. Um, I, I, okay. I just I, I wanted to hear a little bit more about about the back end, um, just for academic interest, because I, I do quite a lot of options stuff, and I'm just curious as to. Um, as to what they do, but I, you know, and it's your call if we discuss that now or. What I, what I suggest you do is we invite Chad around for a beer slash, Coffee. slash. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a better idea. I think it's a great idea. And Adam has said, you know, what is, what is the top percentage of your total portfolio would you recommend should be in structured notes? So Adam, that is such a million dollar question. Well, it's not really a million dollar question. It firstly depends where you are on your freedom journey. So are you wanting to now bring income in? Are you wanting to start to feed off? So generally, you're going to start bringing structured notes in only into your portfolio once you've got bigger chunks, because this is bigger chunks of money per, per structured note. So if you're just starting out, getting that regular investing. Now, with growth notes, you can actually bring growth stability, not just income. So that's what's useful for it. But um, and then where you are, if you now at that stage of you paying for your lifestyle from your assets, you've achieved your financial freedom number, you could have a higher um, portion in there. And so you've each got, got to make your own decision on that. So for me, somewhere in, in point when you're in your feeding off stage, looking at going into those fixed income kind of portfolio design, 20 to 30% of that portfolio into that area. If you're also wanting to bring some growth in, you could then end up having more. But again, just balance out, You, as Chad said, you're wanting to have those different elements. And as I said, you want to have those different assets. And also it depends what else you've got. So are you interested in real estate? Are, are you Have you got leveraged investment property portfolios that are also, what else have you got in your portfolio bringing income? Do you have royalties do you have businesses that are generating low input business uh, income what is your overall wealth picture you've got to look at what for what purpose are you bringing these different elements in chad are there, is there anything else you would sort of bring as as a gauge on that portfolio structure and, and structured notes in that yeah i think um so i'm mid 50s i'm comfortable at about a 30 percent of my portfolio um you know, it just depends, I guess. Uh, I'm looking for stability, so I can some certainty. Um, so yeah, I'm comfortable there. So, yes, uh, it, it's very personal, isn't it? Yeah. And what else you've also got in there. But, you know, yeah. I think either Chad and I would ever say you're going to shove all of your money in, into structured notes. <laughs> you know, um, you, there Don't do that. It has a role, yeah, in, in that portfolio. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, everyone just said thank you so much. Said hi, Chad. Um, if you say your kids have structured notes and they're also not in the drawdown stage, what is their strategy? Well, it will be their growth. So I look at these as foundational income. Um, I would not personally, I would not look at bonds um, and they don't need the cash. 
So this for me covers the cash or cash equivalents very nicely. Um, <clears throat> but what we're specifically doing is trying to understand with them at their stage, what about the underlyings? What's the bank seeing in these particular companies? Um, and I'm looking forward to having the options chat because you can follow what the bank's doing. Um, now you can either own the shares directly or in a in an index, for example. Um, so in this is actually lessons. So we discuss these, and and I invite you all to the rationale discussion because Andrew's got this depth of knowledge. It's amazing. So why is the bank looking at these right now? You know what's what's the story? And maybe it will impact or or help guide you in your asset allocation elsewhere. That's yeah, wonderful. Being a self-led investor is so liberating. Um, and, I, and and that's why I need to get my kids into it early. Absolutely. And, and how appropriate for Freedom Day when we actually talk about the, <laughs> the liberation that comes with knowledge and being able to bring yeah. it in and, and, and make self-determination decisions based on the availability of what's there and then and also the, the skill set to be able to make those decisions so beautifully put and, and what a gift to give to your kids Chad to help yeah. those yeah. conversations that we're not just blindly trusting what others tell us Donna Teller says hi is this product in May I've read the minimum term is four years is this common I thought I've read one year and a half somewhere in the presentation so Donna Teller what's really important is to understand the product generally could go for four or five years that's the long term there's an auto call where that the, the product will be traded out closed out earlier generally that is the case but you must factor in that your money could be locked away for the full duration and so that's the difference between the auto call where they end in an earlier time versus that full duration um, and then Lucy says, what happens if the bank goes down when they're holding your investment? Right. So I think that was the key point earlier in the presentation that Chad shared, looking at the um, risk rating of the banks, looking at that, which is the same as whether you've got a bond or whatever. You have these moody risk ratings, um, the AAA, the A+, plus, the B plus ratings. And that's where Chad was saying the type of banks that these are done with um, are in that rating. But let's say, what happens if it does happen, Tav? So, and and that's that's such a wonderful question and it's, it's so valid. If the bank was to go down at the levels that we are talking about, um, you know, you're talking the, the largest banks in Europe. So what happened when Credit Suisse, and there were shenanigans, there's all the history of stuff there. What did the Swiss government do? They brokered a deal overnight that the United Bank of Switzerland took over Credit Suisse. There's, they would never let banks of this level slide. Now, they never say never, right? Now, we've got money sitting on platforms, AJ Bell, all those. We should be asking the questions, how safe are those and our money in there? Where's your money today? What bank are you using today? It's... It's so important to, to risk manage, and we do this definitely in the product and in the product design. Um, it's a wonderful question, Lucy, and you should be asking that of everything you do, I guess. So I, I think simply put, I mean, in Europe and UK, there are undecided, there, are, there is underwritten insurance in bank deposits. Mm -hmm. It's 100,000 euros in European banks. It's I think it's 80, 65 or 80,000 GBP in UK banks per deposit. Yep. 200,000 uh, in, in the US or 250,000 USD. Not all banks, those are FIDIC insured um, banks. But my understanding in these products don't fall under the same, it's not a bank deposit that you've made. So you don't have that government-based insurance, what you're looking at and why it's important to understand who create these notes. So there isn't yep. government-based protection in the same way as if you just shoved your money in the bank. And that's the difference between getting a one and a half percent interest rate versus a institutional based coupon. Right. And then, and just, just one extra, uh, because we're loaning money to the bank, we sit on their balance sheet. So today, everybody that was with Credit Suisse now have structured notes with UBS. It's issued off their balance sheet. Um, so they have to honor it. And if we were to stand in line as creditors, we'd stand first, even before depositors. 
That's really interesting. Great. Fantastic. Well, what an amazing session. As you said, Chad, you. I said, I'm not sure we'll need 90 minutes, but hell yes, here we are exactly. <laughs> minutes. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you for all your amazing wealth builders for showing up, asking fantastic questions. All of you diving in, doing this, taking personal responsibility for your joy and your freedom and your wealth. You friggin' rock. And thank you, Chad. It's great to have you in cool. our Thanks for having me. It's always wonderful. Thank you. Well, bye, everyone.